All right, welcome to Photography After Hours, episode two. We are here today talking about when to buy a DSLR in your career. So should you, as a beginner, buy a DSLR as your first camera? So we're gonna get right into it and uh, we'll bounce it over like we always do to Sprague over here. So if, if you're out there and you're in the market to buy a brand new camera, should you go out and put the big bucks down and buy a high-end DSLR for your first camera? Absolutely, you should experience the same cost and terror as the rest of us. <laughs> I don't believe in letting anybody have the easy way out. <laughs> so but, there, there it is, now we're done. We'll see you yeah, next so, episode. That's it, see what else do you need to know? Um, actually, I think the best thing to do if you are truly interested in getting into photography on a professional level is to go ahead and start out with a DSLR. Something um, Canon-wise in the uh, Rebel series or for uh, Nikon, maybe a, a D60 uh, type range camera because they're fairly inexpensive for retail. They're about $800 and you can find them uh, used uh, for quite a bit less. And you need something, I think, that basically is, uh, it's got all the basic settings. They're easy to find. If you get a camera that's much cheaper than that, they have a tendency to get a lot of menus embedded that make just finding make just finding the basic settings kind of difficult. And I had a recent experience with somebody who bought a Nikon camera as a kit that was about a $300 type of a thing. And we couldn't even figure out how to shoot it in auto. So at least if you get something on the Rebel side, you've got all the basic controls that you see on the big SLRs on the top of the camera and you're gonna get um, used to where the controls are and probably get more used to hitting the basics of ISO shutter speed. And uh, So what do you think about that, Scott? I don't agree. You, you what? Know, a person, <laughs> think about it, a person who's just getting, what a, do you mean? a person who's just getting into photography and they want to learn about photography. The best thing to do, I mean, it's what I did. I started with a point and click. I used my cell phone a lot. The reason for that is because you need to develop your creative eye first, okay? Sometimes the technology gets in the way of that. And once you start to develop your creative eye, you learn composition, you understand, you know, how to frame things, how to, you know, what, how to, how to focus in on your subject and determining what your subjects are. After you get through that exercise, then if you decide that you even like photography at that point, then you can start to upgrade yourself to a higher technology. Because at that point, the technology is only gonna push your creativity further. If you start off with it, it could hinder your creativity because the technology can get in the way of you being creative. So I would suggest using your cell phone because smartphones nowadays, everybody's got one. There's always a camera and the cameras are very good. Now they have extremely, you know, high resolutions on them, excellent picture quality, excellent video capability, and you, they're always with you. You So say everyone, a lot of people do have a smartphone already. What would be the next step that you would suggest? Would you suggest going towards a point and shoot or going towards an SLR? Uh, point and shoots used to be kind of the, the go-to for beginner photographers, but I think anymore it's almost going to hamper your understanding and your your comprehensive application of the basics of photography so controlling your shutter speed controlling your iso and your aperture um, i think that when you get so much into the cameras that do everything for you um, it confuses the issue because you spend more time trying to understand what the camera does when you press the little landscape button or you press the little sports button you don't have an understanding of like it's what it's dust doing that does camera magic. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's like, woo! And Look like, at that. I'm an awesome photographer. Just like that. <laughs> yep. Like Scott said, um, most people have does. a smartphone. So they're shooting with their smartphone. And I think that that is the place to start developing your creative eye. And then go to something that has the manual controls, but maybe also still has the the fail safe, so to speak, in terms of the Rebel series or the Nikon equivalents where if they're at a birthday party, they don't want to miss that precious shot. That's not where they want to cut their teeth on photography, but they want to go into full auto mode. It's still so there for them. I hear both of you guys saying creative eye. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to our audience out there what you mean by creative eye? Well, you got to understand 
you know that's, how, that's again they're going to be beginners out there right. watching this newbie photographers that are just trying to get into it so they may not understand what, what we're you're, well first you have to identify your subjects and be able to isolate your subject um, understanding composition understanding how to tell a story with your photos you know a lot of times you know you look at someone's photo and you're not exactly quite sure what the subject is let alone what the story is that they're trying to tell too much clutter there's too much in there and and people need to develop that so that you know their per their, their picture has purpose okay so simplicity so dumb it down to real simple to, like, well, it's the actually not dumbing it down that's actually a, it, it's a craft in itself to learn how to, you know, compose something to isolate what it is that you're trying to say. Well, I wasn't mean dumbing it down, but really people go out there and they're like, oh, look, there's like a rattlesnake and um, a saguaro and this and a sunset. And they put 30 things in there where it would have been just simple with just one one object, one of those four. Yeah, pick, not pick a subject, I, tell the story. Yeah, so I if think a lot. Yeah. If you're at the ocean and it's, and there's, there are fantastic waves and things like that. Tell the story about the ocean, not not everything, including the rocks and the trees and the sky and the people on the beach and all of that. If you're trying to, to convey the waves, sure, puts some other elements in it. But I think that that comes in time and doesn't necessarily require any specific equipment. So Sprague, um, as far as the rules of photography, do you feel that they should just run out and start shooting as soon as they get a smartphone uh, point and shoot or SLR? Or do you feel they should maybe do some research? Well, I think that you know a little bit of research is important, but uh, as we said, most people have experience using camera phones and the results are pretty typical. They, they look like snapshots and people who get into professional photography are trying to hone that into something that's more emotionally compelling. So composition and the technical aspects of a camera are not necessarily mutually exclusive. And I think that it's a journey that you go to kind of travel down and make um, both of those things come together. Because I think a lot of people never really think about the concept of, you know, how to isolate a subject. And there are a lot of ways you can do that. You can do it with color, you can do it with uh, backlight, front light, um, blurring the background. And I think until you actually get out and get this camera in your hand and get to see the effects of taking a lot of different pictures, a lot of different ways, you're not gonna really understand it. Uh, everybody typically, when they first start out with a DSLR, will go out, shoot in full auto, results will be average. You won't really know why a picture worked and doesn't work until you start getting into the manual settings. And people typically shoot the typical subjects in their backyard, the flowers, rusty drain pipes, grasshoppers, things like that to get started. And not terribly interesting, but it, it kind of gives you an idea how to focus the camera. So when you do get an interesting people shot or a landscape shot or a cityscape shot, then you've got something uh, to work back on. So that's really kind of your, your basic and you know, where you get set up. So, Scott, as, as far as the rules and everything, um, do you think they're important, not important? Yeah, they are important. They're absolutely, I mean, there are certain elements that, that make a piece, an art piece versus, you know, what, what Sprague was saying is a snapshot. I mean, you know, there's a lot of times people are too busy trying to put things into their photo to make them more interesting. And what I always tell people is try to eliminate and take things out of your photo and the th you know, you got to learn to be in control of what's in your frame. Every single thing that's in your frame, you're responsible for it being there. And it has to have a purpose for being there. It's like any other art, you know, like if you, if you look at literature, you know, when an author writes a story, you know, every single word in that book has a purpose. You know, he's not going to talk about, you know, the fact that the main character's shoelace is untied unless later on in the story, that becomes relevant where all of a sudden he had to bend over and tie his shoe and at that very moment he dodged a bullet or something like that. It becomes a relevant aspect yeah. into the story. So when you're looking at it from a photography perspective, you're responsible for every single element that's in your frame. Everything in that frame has to tell and support the subject of what you're shooting. I think ultimately that's true um, with professional photography in general and when we're when we know better so to speak and um, I think that for beginners that's kind of that's a pretty heavy concept to um, 
to kind of put upon them or expect. I think that it should be fun and creative and they should learn um, the guidelines and the rules for what makes up a compelling photograph. And then, like you said, work toward eliminate, eliminating the distractors, eliminate the excess and things like that um, in order to convey the story without losing a unique creative style because that's the one thing if we all just follow the prescribed rules we won't have any kind of uh, artistic difference between our our work well some styles are people call them styles but they're not you know we see them a lot in the different boards and everything um, like the overprocessed style and they're like the people see that as their style but then I know I look back on my overprocessed work and I kind of cringe and reprocess it and usually take all that out so you know you have to be careful creating a style because what you think is a style as you learn more you realize oh this is kind of not really a style it's everyone does that when they first get these sliders they push them all to a hundred right just because they go to a hundred doesn't mean you have to push the slider to a hundred but i can saturate it some more yeah saturation i I, you oversaturate it it looks awesome the greens and blues and everything and then you look back at it two every two years you know um you look back at your stuff and you kind of cringe or you should if you don't cringe then you probably haven't advanced i don't think you haven't learned anything haven't learned anything so if you're not looking back at your old work going, ooh, I can't believe I did that, or why did I do that, or why is the horizon right in the center? HDR, that, I looked at my yeah, it's old meant pictures. Yeah, stand for horrific digital retouching. <laughs> but going back to the, the rules, I mean, photography is an art like every other art, and there's the same rules apply across all genres yeah, of art. Painting. It doesn't matter if you're painting, or if you're, you know, what, you know, things like color balance and color theory, and, you know, balance and rhythm and, and structure, and, and um, you know, everything that applies to any art piece, yeah. it all carries over. And it doesn't matter what the genre of art is, there are, you know, like art rules. Even the, the lighting patterns that we teach tomorrow That's are right. from back in painting right. days. They're I mean, not you know, having Leonardo to do with photography. Vinci defined it when he was painting, and we haven't invented anything new since then. We're carrying it over from then. So these things have been They're around. HDR, though. They're cool. very good guidelines. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. and but you know the thing is, is everybody says you gotta you gotta know the rules to break the rules. There's a lot of people that are going out there and breaking the rules, and they don't know why they're breaking it. They don't know what they're really doing and why they're you know. So yeah, you yeah the rules are important. So I think to go back to the question, you know, should you go and buy a, you know spend a lot of money in technology and cameras and whatnot if you're really interested in photography. You need to learn photography, and not just photography, but art in general, because that's what it is. It's an art form. So, so in, in summarization, um, do we think that someone should go out and put the big bucks down, like Sprague said, or should we stick with you know an iPhone? What's, what's our advice to everyone out there? What do we think? Should they, should they start at a beginner level, Rebel maybe, or a used one? I, used, you know, I bought my first cameras and stuff. I got them used or got them from my dad, my film cameras stuff like that, is there is there a need to go out there and buy the highest price camera out there? I think the iPhone is pretty pretty expensive, or any Android, those are expensive well, enough, well, and you well, already have it. And the point-and-shoot cameras are not significantly cheaper than a, a baseline Rebel. I mean, you're looking at a difference of maybe two or $300, and for that amount of money, you're really not going to learn anything from a point-and-shoot yeah. camera. So at some point, you have to stand on the cliff and decide what you want to do. If you don't like it, it's an, a simple thing to sell, and uh, you know it cost you a couple hundred dollars, which was a very cheap, uh, fun education. And I think if you look at it that way, that's the way to go. Well, another point that I think um, might be important is that getting into something like a Rebel um, not only is affordable, but it also uh, leaves the option of all the different lenses to interchange with. And it takes a while to find out what lenses are best suited to your style and what you want to shoot. So it took me a while to figure out exactly what lenses worked for me and um, how much I want. I was willing to spend. So I wasn't going to go right out and get the most expensive lenses and know that I had made a good investment in my purchase. So Yeah, I would say definitely stick with the kit lenses, 
and learn the craft. Whatever option you, you make, what we're trying to drill in is learn the craft, the art, learn the basics, you know, take a photo one-on-one -on -one class, whatever you need to do to learn those basics to really learn what you're doing. You see all these pictures all around us. These took time to get there. My first pictures, I look at them and I'm like, yeah, should I just delete all of 1999? Like in whatever it is, you know? Yeah, and people also need to learn how to, you know, edit their, like, and I don't mean like edit as in like post-process. I mean like in camera? Yeah, no, I mean like edit as far as what they put out there for others to view. Because oh, um, I've seen a lot of people, you know, they'll restrain, create an album and it's like your, 20 don't, photos of the exact same thing. 20, and, that's a and, little and, bit. And My sister puts up like 300 and half their eyes are closed and stuff. It's like I got to click through 100 to see a good one. Right, yeah. and so they, they need to kind of, you know, figure out you don't what's the good photo there what's what what's what are they trying to it's restraint yeah, yeah don't show the world everything take it take it and put your best 20 maybe i was gonna say 20 is not a lot i've seen people again with thousands no. that's the transition you have to make from the iphone because you know typically people simply send everything they shoot and yeah, it's yeah see i'm i'm i don't know I, when i go on two, a trip two to five. I, I put yeah exactly I, i'm lucky if i get five shots up but they're my five best shots yeah you know, I don't, so I filter down. And so, you know, that's the other thing too, is that, you know, if you're just out there looking for feedback, you know, no one's going to want to give no you feedback on 300, feedback on 300 no. photos that you post. It's too many. You'd be lucky through, like, if they three even look or, through them, you know? Yeah. So, you know, and you need that feedback in order for you to, you know, push yourself, you know, so that you can learn from that experience. So be real selective as to what you put out there and, and, Rain it in a bit. But still put things out there. Yeah. Like, yeah I mean, that's one there. of the things that I've found about a beginner population um, is that they take, most take the kind of sit and watch and observe and soak in the information and learn. And many are hesitant to participate right out of the gates. And that's where the real learning begins is when they start participating and start showing work and asking questions and engaging. And that's why I sure. think it's important I've, to I've be seen in, a lot of people on the pack group that will go out there and be like, oh, I've been watching for a year and I just decided to put my first image up. It's like, don't be scared. You're not yeah. gonna get better or learn just kind of lurking out there. You're gonna get better and learn by putting work out there and getting constructive criticism on it. If people Definitely. are rude, just let it roll off your back. Don't most won't don't, be. There's always going to be a troll. There's be. always a troll out there. But, yeah, don't you know. let people get to you. These are not your your photos are not extensions of yourself. Your photos are um, something you took. You know, so you know it's like a meal. You cook a meal. It comes out good. Sometimes it comes out bad. If it's bad, the end of the world doesn't happen. So your well, photo is like that meal. And our community is um, very focused on being a positive environment. Yeah. So we want it to be. Um, welcoming and positive for everyone and uh, there are many many participants out there uh, people that have been in the industry for a very long time that participate regularly and offer tons of encouragement and keep that positive focus going. I agree any any last words Sprague on um, you know anything that we've talked about uh, as far as our summary we have about a couple minutes left here well, I think, uh, again, start with something inexpensive like a Rebel. It's a great camera. It takes great images. Professionals use that camera as well because it's light and easy to carry. And unless you need something that's really uh, good as far as low light, um, I think it works fantastic. As Susie says, um, you can roll your lenses forward to your uh, subsequent cameras. And I, I think uh, a lot of it is just uh, finding your own way and uh, you know looking at uh, compositions and understanding that a lot of people will give you criticisms based on what they value. And sometimes you have to look at it simply as that, that mm -hmm. some, one person likes a particular style of photography and that's not what you did and therefore they don't like it, but that doesn't make your work invalid. A lot of it is, um, you know, your particular personality and, uh, you know, your style kind of adapts as you... And those sensors in those cameras, that the bodies aren't built as durable, but, you know, if you drop it, it's going to break a Rebel, but the sensors inside are essentially going to give you a very similar image to someone that has a two or $3,000 camera. Absolutely. So the, the, the inside, it's not exactly the same. I'm not saying they're equal, but 
it's gonna give you what you need out of that image quality. So don't always jump up. So if you're not a beginner and you're watching this, don't always feel like you have to jump up from that to a 70 Mark II or something and put the money out, buy better lenses is my advice on that. So Scott, um, again, we have about five minutes left. What do you what do you feel? So still sticking with the start with the iPhone kind of smartphone? Yeah, I mean the camera, the best the camera, basics. the best camera is the one you already got. I mean, just use it. The, I mean, the point is you're trying to learn photography, go out and take pictures. Don't worry about the technology, just take pictures. And Susie, in summary, any, any last advice for anyone out there of, you know, that's that beginner or just starting out? Uh, get involved in a club and take classes and uh, just soak up as much information as you can. There's tons of information out there. Um, camp out at Starbucks or, uh, or Barnes and Noble or whatever and just read, read magazines, watch videos, get involved and go out and shoot. I think the most important photo thing walks. is get out photo walks for sure. Get I, out I learned shoot. more on photo walks than anything. We, we yeah. st I started this group five years ago, the pack group. And you know what? I look at my photos over those five years and, you know, I yes, I've taken some classes, but a lot of what I've learned is just talking to people. Like, you know, I talked to Sprague and Sprague would be like, oh yeah, use this, you know, plug in. And I'll talk to, you know, Scott and he'll say, hey, try this lens out. And Susie will be like, hey, look at this little way I can use Photoshop. And, you know, all this little stuff that you learn and tidbits. So you're not going necessarily all the time to sit in a really big class and learn it all in one day. You, you pick this stuff up and you gain the experience along and, the way. And you meet people that like to go out and do things that you like to go out and do. Exactly, exactly. Lots of friendships made yep. and everything. So um, in conclusion, we don't really have a answer that, you know, and again, that's why we have four of us on it. We don't have an answer to give you, hey, this is the way to go, but hopefully some yeah, of what we do. said. Susie and I are right, you guys are wrong, you know. <laughs> <laughs> always, always, wait, this is the wrong side. And this I is the right we side. should rumble, you know. <laughs> So um, we don't have a, a unanimous answer for this, but that's never going to happen. That's why we don't have just one of us or two of us here. We have different viewpoints so you can make the decision for what works for you. Um, but everyone did say stay at like a, a Rebel or under, which was going to bring you at a six to $800 a price point with a lens or a lower and a an iPhone is about 199 entry level. So don't go out and break the bank and, and spend a ton of money. Go out, put your money into education, meeting people, free photo walks, other things like that. Um, talk a little bit about our sponsor, PAC. PAC is Photographer's Adventure Club. And what we do is we do workshops, we do seminars, we do photo walks. So you can find them all there. It is a nationwide and we have one in Canada too. So um, North, two. two in Canada? Two in Canada. We have two in Canada. I didn't know that, but all right. That's how we did. <laughs> um, so you, we, you guys uh, can go up there. It's cold. It's cold, it's but they, cold. they have um, northern lights. So I'm, I'm trying to work in a <laughs> workshop very up cold there. Northern so, lights. Um, you know, check out our boards. It's uh, photographersadventureclub.com. So check that out. And uh, we will wrap up and see you next time where we're going to probably be talking about something a little bit more in depth. So keep an eye on, subscribe to this on the subscribe link, and we'll see you real soon. So, cheers out to After Hours. You guys always have to reach all the way over. You guys never reach out. <laughs>